Greetings from St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Fredericton. I'm Bob Jones with organist David Berry providing the music. And I'm asking for a few minutes of your time in a strange season of no hockey, no baseball, and all those other entertainments that we thought we would never be able to get along without. A few minutes of your time when hopefully I can say something to help you get through the crisis. Let's begin with a prayer. O oh God, who has put into our hearts the desire to help and heal those who are troubled, grant that we may never pass by those serious situations which seem to be beyond our control. Unite us in great endeavors of service by which the sore spots of the world will be healed. Perhaps a title for what I'm doing here today would be Crisis, God's Channel. I'm thinking today of two interesting Bible stories, the experiences, indeed the crises, of two people, Moses and Isaiah, both involved in a time of intense personal stress. Listen to this brief account of what Moses was dealing with. It's recorded in the Old Testament book of Exodus. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So he thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from the bush, Moses, Moses. And now I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. It's interesting to note in this story that when Moses referred to the fact that he was hardly qualified, that God did not proceed to list all of his good points. He simply said to Moses, I will be with you. Perhaps at times like this, God may speak to us and simply say that through all these difficulties, I will be with you. Now, prior to what I just read, there had been a great tragedy in Moses' life. In a fit of temper and righteous anger, he had murdered a man. And so to escape the consequences, he ended up tending sheep for his father-in-law, in a place called Midian, with not only his past behind him, but due to the crime that he had committed, we might say also that his future was behind him until that day of the burning bush. You see, with the sun shining through it, it gave the impression that it was on fire, and it seemed that through this, it seemed to Moses that God was speaking to him, calling him to lead a persecuted, suffering, enslaved people to a new land with the promise, I will be with you. Now switch to the other man, Isaiah. His crisis 
was that the king had died. He died after ruling for 40 years. Now here is a description as uh, given in the Hebrew scriptures from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, the sixth chapter. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphs, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. And the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe is me, Isaiah cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar, and with it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and uh, your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. So the account a very mystical account of what happened to Isaiah and what amounted to a call from God. So these two men, differing in circumstances, yet some things in common with each other, and also, I think, in common with you and me. First, they were both alone. Moses, away off in the desert with only the sheep for company. Isaiah, now perhaps he was in a crowd in the temple, but no companions are mentioned in the story. Alone in a crowd. I've been there. Perhaps you have been too. 71 years ago, the first time out of the Maritimes, I took the train from Moncton en route to Ontario. But there was a two-hour stop in Montreal, and I remember sitting there, hundreds of people around me in Central Station in Montreal. I was in a crowd, but feeling very much alone. You can be in a crowd and be alone. So Moses and Isaiah were both alone in a situation where in both cases, God could speak. I'm suggesting that is where we are today in these troubled times. Yes, we have the television, we have internet, we have the newspapers, but we're isolated from the dozen or more places where we usually meet our friends for coffee or a meal or to go to a movie or a game it may be a time for some insights that you haven't ever had. Perhaps not with orders to go and lead a nation, but at least to convey the message, a word of reassurance that everything is going to be okay. And so in these troubled, uncertain days, maybe you feel, as did the poet, Hausman. He died in 1936 at the age of 77. But here is something that he wrote away back then. And how am I to face the odds of man's bedevilment and God's? I a stranger and afraid in a world I never made. Do you feel sometimes afraid? 
in a world that you never made, in circumstances that you never made. I'm going to ask you in closing, have you ever heard of arrow prayers? Prayers when you've got only a few seconds, like when you knock on a door for a difficult visit, or perhaps standing outside the door in palliative care about to go and see a patient. You have a few seconds, and so that is time for an arrow prayer. I found it helpful, very short, and one of these prayers that I have often used. Make it your prayer today. Support me with your bountiful spirit. That's a prayer suggestion I give to you now. Support me with your bountiful spirit. Thank you for listening, and God be with you until we meet again. Amen.